Namaste and welcome to Yin and Restorative Yoga. My name is Michelle Chua. And for today, you'll want to have quite a few props, two blocks if you have them, a strap, a blanket, and a pillow or bolster. Let's start in hero's pose if that is appropriate for your knees. So you can sit either directly on your calves like this, or you can elevate your pelvis on any of your props to make it easier on the knees. If you've got any knee issues and this does not feel appropriate, please do sit in a way that you can sit tall and relax. Take a moment to mentally and physically arrive in your practice. In our physical focus today, um, besides what we're carrying throughout the week of hips and extension, opening up the fronts of the hips, we had a request for warming up, loosening up the shoulders, as well as the lower back. So we'll integrate that too. And this week, philosophically in yoga, we've been focusing on the fourth practice within the second limb of the eight limbs of yoga. If you'll remember that the second limb of yoga is called the niyamas, and they are five practices that you can do regularly to help connect to your inner being, your true nature. And one of those practices that we've been highlighting is fadyaya, which is Sanskrit for self-study, whether you're cultivating self-awareness through meditation or observing yourself as you interact through the day or as you react. It's all about observing our habits and our tendencies so that we can, rather than act by default or by conditioning, we can act by choice. It cultivates freedom to be truly ourselves. So along the lines with Svadhyaya, I'd like to introduce the theme for today's Taurus New Moon, written by um, Carrie from The Magic of Eye which is a group of astrologers, with eclipse season revelation still at the forefront, we arrive at the Taurus new moon with a freshness that only comes after a cleansing rainstorm. There has been a lot up in the air, supely floating around or knocking on our doors that we have not been able to completely invite in yet. But the nudges towards available abundance have been making surprising visits. That thing that I thought I wanted, is it really what I want now? Now that I have more grounded information and clearer feelings? With opening and closing doors, it can be tricky to know which way to go. The medicine for shifting tides is to slow right down. Stop, be in stillness, and get into the body. Does that make my body relax? Does that bring me joy? Really interesting when we practice yoga, physical yoga for a, a while, how we can really establish a more subtle listening to our body and how it reacts and really tells us the truth. Like, is this something I want in my life? Is this something that I need to let go of? Core fundamental values that enliven, enrich, bring pleasure to, open, expand, bring joy makes it all sound so easy and simple to keep coming back to, action towards our goals that align with the above over doing nothing. Security is the ability to know how to tap into our deep, wise body and feel what stability feels like from within, what a yes feels like, what a no feels like, just by observing the expansion and contraction in our body. It does not have to be any more complicated than that. From that place, new and true intentions can arise. So those of you that have practices that harmonize with nature by following the phases of the moon, when there's a new moon, it can be an opportune time to set new intentions for the coming weeks as we move towards that waxing full moon. So think of, is there anything in your life right now that is calling your attention a bit more? And in what way? Is your body saying yes or no in some way? This might sound really general. Maybe it strikes a chord in something more specific for you. 
as you start to narrow down your intention for today's new moon practice, whether it be specific or a general theme for yourself. And start to scan around your physical body as you're setting that intention. What is the feeling in your body? Is it agreeing? Do you feel an opening? Do you feel a closing? Start to notice your overall physical state as you begin your asana yoga. Tuning into the breath as well. Just letting it flow naturally, notice its qualities and how it's letting you know how you feel in your energy. And then how does your mind feel right now? Calm, agitated, restless, focused, without judging it. Can you just notice? How does your heart feel? Are there any emotions you could hold space for and just be with? Let's begin to deepen the breath. Maybe letting out a sigh as you open the mouth to exhale. Breathing in more fully, feeling the expansion at your torso. And letting it all out. An important part of our yoga practice is gratitude. So you might reflect on a few things that you appreciate in your life right now. And having already set your intention, maybe think of someone that you would like to offer this practice to as a way of sending someone else loving kindness. And together, let's set our intentions, creating resonance as we share the practice by chanting Om three times. Breathe in a little deeper. Om. As we continue to breathe deeply, I'm going to invite you to place a hand on the top of your chest near your sternum and a hand just below your belly button and visualize that your torso from the bottom of your pelvis to the top of your neck is divided into three parts or cross sections. The first part is from your belly button down to the pelvic floor. The second part encompasses most of your rib cage and the third part is all above from the chest, upper back, neck and shoulders. Let's practice three part breathing to get into fuller capacity of breaths and to help relax the nervous system. So closing the lips, if you can breathe just through the nose, empty this breath out into the lowest part of your torso. Breathe in for about three counts. Pause into the middle of your torso. Breathe in another three counts. Pause into the top of the torso. Breathe in another three. As you hold the breath, sit tall and relaxed. Observe your body. And then to your nose, really slowly, about nine counts, empty the breath. As you hold the breath out, continue sitting tall, observing your body. 
Round two, inhale the lowest part. Pause, inhale the middle. Pause, inhale the top. Hold the breath in. Exhale slowly. Hold the breath out. One more together, inhale the lowest part. Pause, inhale the middle. Pause, inhale the top. Holding your breath, relax. About nine counts, empty the breath. Hold the breath out. I invite you to try two or three more cycles on your own. Focusing on a very gentle, smooth way of breathing, even though you're holding the breath, try not to be forceful with the breathing. When you've decided that you're done, let go of controlling the breath and sit and observe how you feel for a few moments. And then I'll invite you without holding the breath or pausing in between to try to feel the three parts you are breathing into with a smoother, deep inhalation. One long breath in without holding the breath, smooth exhalation, one long exhalation, starting to balance the length of the inhalation with the exhalation and taking your time. We're gonna start Ujjayi Pranayama, which will bring us into our movements and postures. And this is a breathing technique that also calms the nervous system while focusing the mind and helping to balance your exertion. So, Gently narrow the back of the throat as you're breathing with the mouth closed so that you can listen to a faint, smooth whisper to your breath. Can you hear it? And this allows you to regulate your breathing and to bring your attention to the breath which is happening in the present. So if your mind tends to wander, come back to the sound of the breath. Come back to that ujjayi. All right, let's make our way down to all fours and we'll start to add movement connecting to the breath. Spread the fingers wide, stack the shoulders over the wrists. Step your knees back a couple of inches behind your hips and let's move into cat cow as you breathe in, glide your chest forward. Roll your shoulders back and down, lifting your gaze, cow pose. As you breathe out, contract your abdomen, dropping your head to round the back, cat pose. Again, inhale as you draw your heart forward, spreading your collarbones wide. Exhale as you lift your navel, tucking the tailbone, dropping the head. Keep going, maybe another three to five cycles of Bidalasana, cat-cow pose. And if there's a different direction your body wants to move to help loosen up, feel free to explore that. Eventually, when you're ready, tuck your toes behind you and lift your hips back, entering a moving downward facing dog in which you might pedal your feet gently in place to warm up the backs of your legs. Adding to that, you might also swivel your hips side to side like you're dancing the twist to open up the sides of your lower back, torso, outer hips. Maybe even shake your head a few times, helping to relax your neck, gnaw the head. As you're pressing the ground with fingers spread, lift your shoulders back and really try to create space in the neck. 
Relax the tongue, relax the jaw. Roll your triceps towards the earth. And then when you're ready, walk up to the top of your mat, standing in a forward fold. Bend the knees a lot here and bring your hands behind you, whether to clasp maybe the heels of the palms touch or to hold a strap between the hands if that helps you to stretch the arms further forward to open the front of the shoulders. You might gently sway your spine as you lightly straighten one leg and lean towards it. Deeper stretch in the hamstrings, calves. You might shake and nod your head a little more. Now, as you're stretching your arms forward, try bending your elbows slightly so that you can lift your shoulder bones while dropping your head. Really try to create space in the neck. Maybe you flutter the lips to unhinge the jaw. Great posture for stimulating circulation, especially to the brain. If you've been sitting upright all day, this is a great reboot. Let's release the arms down. Grab your strap while you're down here. Bend the knees a lot. And as you breathe in, slowly roll your spine upright like you're stacking one vertebra at a time, lifting your head last. All right, let's warm up the shoulders a little more actively. We had a request for our uh, flossing the shoulders technique with a strap. So if you don't have a strap at home, you could use a towel, you could use a sweater, anything that's kind of long like this. And step your feet apart, maybe hips distance or wider, parallel, get some rootedness with the knees slightly bent. Hold the strap between your hands so that your hands are spaced apart, maybe a little wider than shoulders distance. If you've got a lot of tightness in the shoulders, go even wider, give yourself a little more grace. And then hold the strap taut so it's not hanging loose like this, it's a straight line. Relax the shoulders back and down, seal in the front ribs, stand tall. Try to keep your neck long so when you raise the arms, keep the shoulders down. You can always adjust the spacing between the hands. Now connecting movement to breath. As you inhale, slowly lift the arms overhead. And as you exhale, slowly extend the arms behind you and down. Inhale the arms up. Exhale them forward and down. Let's keep going. Several more cycles of breath. If you find that your shoulders are getting a lot warmer, you want to open them up more deeply, you can step the hands a little closer together. Notice how your shoulders feel, especially as you're lifting the arms. And can you still hear that soft whisper in your breath? And let's tune into about five more cycles of breath here. Also, see if you can keep the elbows straight, not bending them throughout the movements. All right, when you're ready, let go of the strap and step up to the top of your mat. You may want to have your two blocks on their tallest height, framing your heels. Let's join the hands in prayer. We connect to your intention for your practice. We're going to flow not through sun salutations, but a little more focus on the hip flexors here to warm up. So connecting movement to breath, offering gratitude to the sun, which supports all life on this planet. Inhale, sweep the arms forward and overhead in Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hinge forward from your hips. <coughs> Press your shins or the ground. Inhale, stretch your spine forward. Exhale, lower your fingertips outside your heels, maybe on blocks, and step the left knee behind you on the ground. Kneeling lunge, tuck the back toes and breathe in, sinking your hips. Gazing up. Keep your feet where they are, and as you exhale, lift the back knee. Draw your right outer hip back to whatever degree you can straighten the legs and bow like you have a flat back, pyramid pose. Let's go in and out. Inhale, kneeling lunge again, looking up. Exhale, wide pyramid pose, folding in. 
three more cycles of breath. Listen to your breathing. If your hamstring feels really warm when you bow in, you could lift the ball of your right foot flex to go a little deeper if you need it. You might be on the last cycle here. Come into a high lunge when you finish your last pyramid pose and then step the left foot forward, step the right knee back and switch sides. Tuck the back toes, inhale in your kneeling lunge, gaze up. Exhale, lift the back knee, draw your left outer hip back towards whatever degree you can straighten the legs and bow like you have a flat back again. Inhale, kneeling lunge. Exhale, wide pyramid pose. And if this hamstring feels really open, you want to go deeper. When you straighten the legs to fold, you could lift the ball of your left foot flexed. You might be down to two more cycles. And this time, sit the back knee to the ground and come on down to sit at the center of your mat. We're going to continue our warm up, gentle movement, lying down on our backs. Take a block with you and just set it aside by the rear of your mat. And come on down to your back with your knees bent. Step your feet on the ground and take the block by the skinniest or medium width hugging that between your knees and thighs. So decide the width by what allows your knees to be closest to your hips distance apart. And then separate your feet the same amount. Bring the arms down by your sides. If you wanna work your glutes and hamstrings more strongly as we warm up, we're gonna move in and out of bridge pose several times. You could slide your heels much more forward where you really can't feel them with your fingertips. Up to you. Ground the backs of your shoulders, tilt your chin back slightly, and connect to the sound of your breath. Let's take it through seven rounds. We're really gonna warm up these hip flexors and the back muscles. So as you press down through the feet, inhale, lift your hips, stretch your tailbone towards the block, lifting your chest. When you start to breathe out, begin to lower your spine gently from the upper back to your tailbone last. So just one breath each bridge. Inhale, tilt your tailbone up, keep the pelvis on the ground for as long as you can, and then lead with the tailbone, lifting the pelvis, lifting the chest. Very slowly as you exhale, lower as if you're lowering one vertebra at a time. So that beginning of keeping the pelvis on the ground as long as you can and starting with a tilt of the pelvis, the tailbone pointing up, and then letting the tailbone lead, is one way you can stretch the lower back. As you're hugging the block between your thighs, slightly spin your inner thighs towards the ground. So there's a little internal rotation without moving your feet. All right, I don't know if you're counting on your own, but we might be down to about three more moving bridge poses. And when you're ready, gently lower your pelvis, put the block aside, and separate your knees wider than hips distance as you draw them towards your chest. Taking hold of your knees, begin to rotate your thighs in opposite directions, turning them out, turning them in, moving to your breath. Let it be organic, however direction your thighs wanna move, you could feel out the massage that you're giving your lower back and your glutes as well. I used to sometimes fall asleep doing this. 
self-massage. A few more cycles of breath. A little more to warm up the hips. Set your feet on the ground once again, but this time step the feet apart wider than hips distance, maybe even as wide as the width of your mat. Now keep your feet where they are and separate your knees as wide apart as your feet. You might open up the arms so they're out of the way of the legs and let's windshield wiper the legs where they don't ever touch each other. Breathing in, drop the knees to one side. Feet stay where they are, breathing out, knees to the opposite side. Keep going, several more cycles of breath. You might also be feeling a lower back massage, glute massage here. finish the last round that you're on then drop both knees to the right and let's stay there for several breaths so as you drop the knees to the right the legs don't touch each other try to point your left knee down the midline of your mat this might mean scooting the left foot off to the left a little just pause and observe your body remember svadhyaya that self-study it can also mean physical body self-study. So notice what you're feeling around, especially the left side of your psoas, which goes from the front of the hip to the lower back. It's such a deep muscle that it actually goes behind your digestive organs in the front. So if you're not feeling much happening, you want to go deeper, pick up your right foot and cross the ankle just above your left knee onto your left thigh. See how that feels? You could always go back. Another thing you could add is to raise your arms overhead and hold opposite elbows, dropping the arms back and relaxing the shoulders down. Let's tune into just maybe eight or 10 more breaths here. If your knees feel sensitive, like the left knee in this position, you can flex your left foot so you're contracting the muscles around the knee. giving it support. What is your body saying to you right now in this position? We can definitely store accumulated energy in the hips. I mean, we can do that all over the body, but it's often said that emotions can be definitely stored in the hips. So let's start to unwind, step the feet down again, a little wider than hips distance, maybe mat width. And then just pause for a moment. You can relax the arms. Just let your body unwind from that side for a few deep breaths. If you need to exhale a big sigh, cleansing breath, lion's breath help to move any stagnancy that you feel when you're ready keep the feet where they are and drop your knees both to the left side try to point your right knee down the center line of your mat pause here and just notice especially anything you're feeling around the right side of your pelvis, including the lower back, front of the hip. Is there anything different to notice on this side? Whether your body's asking you to stay in this version of the pose or to go deeper, the latter would look like crossing the left ankle just above your right knee onto your right thigh. Maybe flexing the right foot to support the right knee. You might also explore raising the arms overhead. And if you did so on the opposite side, maybe switch the cross of the elbow that you're holding on top. Let's listen to eight to 10 more cycles of breath.
Are you feeling any areas of gripping in your body or your mind? Like reactivity, especially if there's a lot of stored tension here. And if so, you could back off a little, go a degree or two less, and really focus on the breath, especially your exhalations, which allows you to loosen the grip. You might imagine a feeling of melting as you breathe out like an ice cube on a hot sidewalk. Take your time when you're ready to exit. Do it slowly, set your feet on the ground again, knees apart, and just pause in that more neutral position, observing how your body is unwinding from that side of the pose. Practicing yoga asana for a while, you can start to really see the patterns of where you personally might carry contraction in the body even from mental stress translated into physical. All right, let's slide the left leg forward and bend the right knee into your chest, taking hold of the shin or the thigh. We'll circle the right foot out, stretching into the ankle, the calf and shin. You can give your digestive organs on that right side of your belly a little pressure to stimulate them. Try to keep relaxing your head down. If you need, use a pillow or blanket underneath. Also, shoulders on the ground. Just to get a little more width to stretch across the lower back. <clears throat> Let's take just the right leg <clears throat> into happy baby pose. So press your left palm onto the very top of your left thigh to keep the back of your left hip on the floor as you splay the right knee open. Lift the sole of your right foot towards the sky and bring your right arm on the inner side of your right thigh, crossing the hand over to hold your outer ankle or foot. Then gently bring the right knee or draw the knee downward towards the floor just outside of your right shoulder for a few more breaths. One more deep breath here. And slide your right leg to the ground. Raise your arms overhead, point the toes or stretch the feet in any way. Just take a long body stretch. Maybe some deep cleansing exhalations with the mouth wide. Now keep the right leg on the floor, bend the left knee into your chest, take hold of your thigh or shin. <clears throat> and as you bring that leg closer towards the left side of your belly, you can give the colon some compression as you focus the breath into that region of the belly. And then also circling out the left foot to stretch the ankle, the shin and calf. This is called half wind relieving pose, Apanasana. Let's slide the left thigh further out to the left. Press the right palm onto the top of your right thigh to keep the back of your right hip on the ground. 
Bring the left arm on the inner side of the left leg and catch hold of your outer foot or ankle, lifting the sole of your left foot towards the sky as if just your left leg were in happy baby. Full spacious breaths here. What do you notice on this side of your hips in the same pose? One more deep breath. And then slide your legs forward, raise your arms overhead. Take a full body stretch, maybe some clearing exhales through the mouth. Ha. Ah. Draw your bent knees into your chest and begin to rock in any direction a few times so that eventually you can rise up to sit. We're gonna set up, or I'm gonna invite you to set up in supine hero's pose, the posture we started with, lying back. If that posture is not okay for your knees, here's an alternative. Sphinx pose, lying on the ground with a belly on the floor, knees close together, crossing one forearm in front of you as you backstroke the opposite arm to catch that side of your inner ankle or foot. So we're gonna be in the posture for about two minutes. So if you're doing this version, you could take one minute per leg. Otherwise, both legs at the same time, you can either sit on your block between your ankles like this, or if it feels okay with it, if your knees feel okay with it, sit directly on your calves or gently roll the calves aside and sit on the ground directly between your ankles. Now, important for safely aligning your knees. First, keep your knees on the ground and no wider apart than hips distance. And second, try not to turn out or turn in your feet. You want your toes pointing straight back because your knees are pointing straight forward. Now from here, you may want to have set up behind you a pillow that you can use like a recliner or a couple of blocks like we do in supported fish pose high block for the back of the head, furthest away, medium height block across the width of the mat for right underneath the shoulder blades. Maybe you don't go back that far, just see what's available. Again, we're gonna be here for two minutes. I'm watching the clock now. Take your time finding your capacity and just being there. See if you can be wherever your range is in the pose you chose without fidgeting has remember that these postures, especially yin and restorative yoga, are a preparation for being still in meditation. Let your awareness continue to rest on the sound and feeling of your breath. Got about 45 seconds left. So if you're on your stomach, you might switch legs if you haven't switched legs yet.
All right, take your time. If you're lying back, give yourself several breaths to slowly rise up to sit and eventually stretch your legs out in front of you. If you're on your stomach, you might slide into child's pose gently and just pause there before you roll your spine upright to sit. If you are in supine hero's pose, you might just gently massage out your knees, maybe rotate the thigh bones inward and outward like you're windshield wiping your feet. Just opening up space in the backs of the knees is because that can feel kind of intense. Yet, if it doesn't hurt, it can be helpful for increasing the mobility in your knees. One of the largest muscles in our body is our quadriceps, these front muscles of the thighs. And when they're really, really tight and we don't foam roll them or the IT band or stretch them frequently and we do a lot of running or things that contract them, and that can definitely affect the knees, really pulling on the knees, which bears so much of our weight. All right, let's make our way into downward facing dog and I'll invite you into single pigeon pose. Or if you prefer, stay on your back for what's called thread the needle. And that's where you cross your ankle over the opposite thigh, like a figure four, lying on the back, flex the foot on top and bring the bottom leg towards you. Otherwise, for single pigeon, start in downward facing dog and turn out your right thigh at the hip. Slide your right shin across your mat in front of your pelvis and lower to sit with your left leg straight behind you. Begin by tucking your back toes, placing your hands alongside your hips and lifting your pelvis so that you can really draw your right outer hip back and rotate your left outer hip forward until both your frontal hip bones are equally facing the front of your mat. Now, if you find that there's a gap between your right glute and the ground, fill that gap. You can shape your blanket as thick as you need so that you're comfortably sitting with the hips squared. Then relax your back toes, lift your chest, feel free to grab your pillow or blocks and pillows, whatever configuration of props that you may want to rest your torso on as you fold forward. There's another option here. If you feel really loose in the spine and you wanna go into a spinal twist while you're folding forward, you can take the other thread the needle, opening up the upper back. And that you can do by placing your right fingertips on the ground towards the upper right corner of your mat, flare the right elbow up, and then slide your left arm underneath your right bent elbow, lowering the left side of your head all the way down. You can also place the left side of your head on any of your props, using them as a pillow. Okay, and watch the clock for two minutes before we switch sides. Come back to your breath.
couple last breaths where you are. If you're on your back, stay on your back and prepare to take the second side the same way. You might just come into happy baby before you switch sides. Otherwise, from single pigeon pose, gradually make your way back to downward facing dog. And before you switch sides, you might raise your right leg and give it some movement at the hip. When you feel ready, set the right foot down and turn out your left thigh at the hip, crossing the left shin in front of your pelvis. Slide the right leg straight behind you as you lower to sit. Tuck your right toes and frame your hips with your hands so you can lift the pelvis and draw the left outer hip back. Rotate the right outer hip forward, squaring the hips. You might place a prop under your left glute. Then relax your back toes and as you breathe in, lift your chest. Take your time, you might be staying upright. This side might be different for you. You might fold onto your props or you might come into the other thread the needle, the spinal twist. If so, plant your left fingertips on the ground towards the upper left corner of your mat, flaring the left elbow towards the sky. Then thread the right arm underneath your left bent elbow and lower the right side of your head all the way down. Maybe you use a pillow of some kind to rest your head on. All right. Find your position to be still in. Come back to observing the breath and regulating it. And we're here for two minutes. All right, a couple last deep breaths here. Take your time coming into your more neutralizing position, whether it's happy baby or straddling the legs wide on your back or back to downward dog. This time raising the left leg and moving it out. Let's spend a few breaths in child's pose. Bring your feet together to touch. Knees together or apart. Sink your pelvis all the way back down towards your heels and stretch your arms forward so we can actively lengthen the lower back and the sides of the torso. If you wanna stretch into the triceps and the shoulders a bit more while you're here, you can bend the elbows on the ground or on two blocks. Placing the elbows apart, shoulders distance, and then lifting the hands so that your fingertips are pressing against each other as you trace your thumbs down the back of your skull. Rotating your triceps towards the floor and sliding your shoulder blades down the back. 
However you're practicing child's pose, let's be here for another 10 slow breaths. It's already a very grounding position to place your body in. So make use of that feeling. Let the exhales invite your body to become heavier, really resting into the support of Mother Earth below. Staying in child's pose a little longer, please extend your arms forward if not already and crawl your hands to your right side so that as you're reaching to the right, maybe hands off the mat, you can stretch the left side of your lower back and torso a bit more. Take your time walking your hands over to the left side. Stretching the right side of your torso. Coming back through center, crawl your fingertips alongside your knees and drop your chin to your chest, breathing in to slowly roll your spine upright. Let's slide the legs in front of you and prepare for one more posture before we prepare to rest. Set the feet apart, hips distance and flexed. Ground your sitting bones. You could use a strap around the balls of your feet as an extension of your arms if you tend to round the shoulders so that you don't do that. And then lengthen up to your chest. Keep lifting the chest as you're bowing slowly from the hips. Paschimottanasana, seated forward fold. Pressing down through your pelvis. Inhale to slowly rise up. All right, let's set up for a comfortable resting pose in Shavasana. You may give your lower back some support by placing your pillow or rolled up blanket underneath the backs of your knees as you lie down on your back. Stretching your feet apart, legs apart. Resting your arms down by your sides with the palms face up to relax the shoulders. And closing your eyes. Releasing control of the breath and releasing yourself from any need to do. Now is your next few moments to just be. 
Shavasana. As you rest here a little longer with your eyes closed, notice how your body feels now. Begin with a subtle movement like rubbing your thumbs across your fingertips and start to gently wake up your body. Ease into simple stretch. Keeping the eyes closed as you eventually turn over onto your right side and rest your head. Spend a few moments there noticing your breath, feeling your energy as a result of your practice. And take your time lifting your body up. Please find a comfortable way to sit 
where you can feel grounded, alert, open and relaxed. Preparing to sit for five minutes in meditation. You might place your hands in a neutral mudra, <clears throat> stacking the right palm face up on top of the left palm face up on the center of your lap with your thumb tips gently touching and maybe close the eyes. As you breathe naturally, if you're needing an anchor for your mind, you might rest your awareness on the feeling of the breath coming and going. Sense the rootedness of your pelvis, the full length of your spine, arriving at your head, feel the expression on your face. Might you allow your lips to curve into a very subtle smile which is the energy of receptivity as you are receiving life in observation, just as it is. Allow the energy of a smile to travel up to your eyes where they allow your eyes to relax Where else might you bring the feeling tone of a smile, that lightheartedness and openness throughout other parts of your body? I invite you as you sit here now to bring back your intention on this new moon. As you say it out loud or mentally to yourself, notice any response in your body. Does it make your body relax? Does it bring you joy? Notice how your mind and heart feel now. Allow a moment to acknowledge anyone and anything that 
had to come together for you to be sitting here now, enjoying the fruits of your practice. And then remember to whom you dedicated today's practice. And together, let's close chanting Om three times. Let in a deep breath. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste.